First things first, you're going to want to take the battery, flip the camera around, and you'll see this battery slot here. Make sure that the bottom silver prongs are lined up with the silver prongs on the camera, insert it into the battery slot, and slide down until you hear a click. Next up is the card. This is what the footage will be recorded onto. So you're going to want to open up this side screen and you'll see two panels. Two slots can be open with the little switches down here. Just push it to the side and insert your card. Once the card is inserted, close the slot. Next up, you're going to want to set up the audio. So take a microphone and insert it into this little upper slot. Once that's in there, you're going to take an XLR cable and plug it into the end of the microphone and then into one of the input spots on the camera itself. Now if you flip the camera to the other side, you're going to see this audio control panel right here. There's a bunch of different options, but the main ones you're going to need to worry about are at the bottom, the internal and external switches. These control if the audio is captured from the internal mic, which is right here, or the external mic, which would be what you just plugged in. So if you're trying to capture from your external mic, make sure you switch it to whatever channel slot you plugged into. As you can see, we plugged into channel 2. And if you want audio to be captured from these internal mics, just keep one of them switched on to internal. If you don't want any audio to be captured from there, you can switch it to external and no audio will come through. Next up is putting the camera on a tripod. The legs can be adjusted to your preferred height by releasing these, moving the legs, and then closing it once you have it in the right spot. For additional height, you can loosen this screw right here and raise the centerpiece to as high as you need. At the top of the tripod, you're going to see this arrow right here. The direction that this arrow is pointing in is the way that you're going to want the lens of the camera to be facing. Now the arrow is pointing to the left, so as you can see when we insert the camera, the lens will also be facing to the left. You'll hear a small click once the camera is in place. On the other side of the tripod, you're going to see this little knob that might look a little different depending on the type of tripod you have. Just tighten it, this will prevent the camera from sliding around if you're panning or tilting. There's a level indicator on the tripod as well. That little bubble, once it's in the circle, will indicate that the tripod is level. So just adjust the legs of the tripod until it's in that spot. Some tripods might have remotes on the arms. These remotes can start recording and zoom in and out. These can be plugged in right up here on the right side of the camera. And if you're using headphones, the headphone jack is located right underneath the battery. Now turn the camera on by pressing in on the screen button and sliding the switch to the camera side. Now that the camera is on, you can open up the side screen if it's not still open, and you will see a display. Now this display includes helpful information like how much battery is left in the camera, how much space and time is left on the card, if your camera is recording or not, and the audio levels. These audio levels here are a great way to make sure that sound is getting through to the camera. If you just tap the microphone a few times, you'll see some response. But it's also good to make sure that you're using your headphones just to make sure that this audio actually sounds good and isn't just coming through all distorted. To start recording on the camera, you can press this black button right here, or press the record button on the remote. You'll see that the standby indicator will change to recording. Towards the front of the camera, you'll see this ring as well as this switch. This ring will be able to adjust zoom, focus, and iris depending on what you have the switch set to. To put it simply, focus will deal with how blurry or sharp an image is, zoom will deal with how zoomed in or zoomed out it is, and iris is essentially brightness, or how much light is being allowed into the lens. There's also zoom buttons on the right side of the camera that can be used to adjust zoom in addition to the ring. Once you've stopped recording by hitting the record button again, you can switch over to the media section to actually look at your footage. Once you've done that, the camera view will turn into a collection of all the footage you've shot so far. You can navigate through it using the joystick on the left side, and once you've found the clip that you want to review, you can press the play button on the camera itself and it will start playing footage. Breaking down the camera is incredibly straightforward. Just turn the camera off, close the lid, unscrew the bolt on the tripod, and press the red button on the tripod in, and slide the camera off. When removing the card, make sure that the slot is open again. You'll see a little gray button. Press that in once, and then again, and it will pop the card out. The battery release is located right here. Just push it in, slide the battery up, and then out. 
This is the 205. It's essentially the 105, but with a few more extra features and better picture quality. Since the cameras are relatively the same, the setup process is nearly identical. Just insert the battery, open up the card slot. The switch to open the slot is located on the slot itself instead of the side, so keep that in mind. Audio setup is pretty much identical too, just plug into one of the inputs, adjust the external and internal microphone switches to your liking. Putting the camera on the tripod is identical to the process for the 105, so just repeat that and you're all set to start. One last thing to mention, the 205s have a lens cover, which can be taken off by pushing that slider down right there. Once you're done filming, just slide it back up to keep the lens safe. Once that's done, turn the camera on the same way you would for a 105, and you're good to start recording. The record button and remote plug-in are located in essentially the same spot as they are in the 105. The only real difference is, is instead of focus, iris, and zoom sharing one ring on the camera, there are now three individual rings for each setting. The outer ring is for focus, the middle ring is for zoom, and the smaller inner ring is for iris. You'll notice next to the rings there are manual and automatic switches for focus and iris. You can adjust these as you see fit. That's pretty much it for the 205. Everything's pretty much the same as the 105, so as long as you have that under control, you're fine to operate a 205 without any issues.